Hello, everybody. This is uh, the first episode of what we're what I'd like to call uh, Late Night Gamer with GGSGamer.com. Uh, I'm Joe Haygood, one of the writers over at uh, GGS Gamer, and uh, also one of the hosts of the You Like the Worst Stuff podcast. Before I get started, just to get things out of the way, if you enjoy this, make sure you come and visit the rest of our works at www.ggsgamer.com. You, know, you can follow us on Twitter at GGS Gamer. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash GGS Gamer. And uh, also you can follow the You Like Your Stuff podcast, which we host uh, from GGS Gamer. And uh, you can follow us there on Twitter at the, uh, at the Worst Podcast. Starting off today with Late Night Gamer, I am showing off Vampire the Masquerade. Now, for those that may not be aware, Vampire the Masquerade uh, is a game that came out, I believe, in 2004. I want to say October or November of 2004. It was one of the first games that used the Source Engine uh, outside of... Uh, Valve products. It was actually supposed to come out a year earlier, but then they had code theft, and uh, it ended up that uh, Troika, which made the game, made Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, had a clause in their contract. They couldn't release it until Half-Life 2 had come out. So they basically had to sit on this for a year. Now... The one thing that a lot of people might know about this game is that when it came out, it was horrendously buggy. Horrendously buggy. I mean, there was a point in the stock game with just the 1.2 patch where I could not, um, I could not even get past a certain point. I had to use a no clip to get past a door where even though I was using the lock, it was stuck. The lock had clipped through and wouldn't open. So it was very buggy. So there's two uh, there's two different uh, groups out there that have continued to work on this game for many many years after it came out. Uh, there's the West group and uh, West Five, and then there's Test Group. Both of them have been making games for points or making patches. Let's going back to, to when the original prefer. game came Matt, out. Care to participate in a taste test? Here, and try this leading brand of chicken. Oh, oh my gosh. Because of that, that uh, now, they've kind of had a little oh, competition between the two of them over um, Sir, whose patch is better. Um, the test mage, he likes to call his the true patch. And primarily because all he did ever did was put fixes into it. And he has two versions of that patch. One that uh, is just a bunch of fixes that go beyond what the uh, official 1.2 patch did. Then he has a different one that adds a bunch of skins and everything, but makes the game a little more mm, colorful. And by colorful, I mean he adds a lot of nudity to it. Now, I'm not a prude. It's anybody's choice. The West 5 patch, on the other hand, um, I believe now it comes in two flavors. It used to only come in one. Hey, hey, and that was where some of the, the sense, complaints came from, was that uh, it changed some stuff beyond uh, just fixing the game. It actually took plot elements that were found and sort of code and, and fleshed them out and added them. Things of that nature. Um, he now, I believe, also has a... what you know, a, a stock patch that just does a bunch of fixes. I've played the game with both patches. Both are fine. Both are fine. You know, don't get sucked up in the rivalry. As a matter of fact, try a playthrough with one patch, try it with the other. I guarantee you, beyond some minor differences with how they may have gone with fixing a problem, the end result is the same. The game's a hell of a lot more fun to play that way. And it adds other things, like it adds widescreen for support, like here. We're playing at 1920 by 1200. The game actually did not support anything over 1280 by 1024 when it came out. Uh, as you saw earlier, I was kind of shifting through this, and uh, once we get through a little cutscene here, as we 
see a wonderful two block radius of downtown Santa Monica, which me living here in California looks nothing like downtown Santa Monica. But, you know, creative license, right? Anyways, one of the things that's neat about this is you can switch between third person, first person, seamlessly on the fly. Uh, the game's all about using melee combat, vampire powers, and you can also use ranged combat with guns. If you're using guns, a lot of times it is easier to go into first person mode, but I'm normally a melee person. Uh, and as we see here, I have selected a uh, Bruja clan female. There are, I believe, about uh, eight clans. Uh, Gangrel, uh, uh, Ventru, uh, Nosferatu. I'm forgetting them all off the top of my head. Um, one neat thing is, is that they did have some fun with the Malkavians, which are kind of some scatterbrained vampires, I believe, in the lore. And so when you use them, dialogue choices with them are very funny very very funny i highly suggest that no matter what you do you know, give yourself a chance to play as a malkavian even if it's just for maybe a half hour to an hour it's 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 a treat to say the least um great thing about this game though is the massive amount of choice that you get uh if you are anybody that's ever played a game like the the deus ex games or um, they allow you to approach problems in multiple ways. Maybe you get to a door, it's got an electronic lock on it. You could hack the lock. Or maybe you could seduce somebody into giving you the code. Or maybe you find a back entrance through a vent that allows you to get there. Oh, by the way, the green dialogue here, it's because I've invested points. There's a, there's a point system for building up your character and whatnot. And this is allowing me to uh, intimidate the guy. There's also uh, seduction. Sure. There's uh, charm. I could a few other spare things. A few uh, here you are. So we're gonna get this guy's uh, watch and some money. Anyways, it's getting beyond that. Uh, one of the reasons Only I picked this game to kind of open up this whole late night gamer thing, which we, I hope to be able to do on a weekly basis, yes, uh, time well, permitting, uh, yeah. is uh, this is a game that sits right at the top of my list along with uh, Knights of the Old Republic, Starflight from 1986, and Mass Effect as a game that is very influential on my gaming history. It's a game that, I kid you not, I have played through nine times to completion. Um, I probably break it out once every 18 months just to have fun with it, enjoy it. It's, uh, it's rather interesting. Yeah, we probably don't want to do that. They see us with weapons. Um, oh, that's weird. My keyboard just went all glitchy on me. See, even with patches, sometimes this stuff gets a little glitchy. Anyways, the whole thing I wanted to get at is... Those brothers that'll fix it. Rip me off. Um, there was something about this game. The the ideas behind it, the story that's in it, it's very, um, it doesn't pull any punches, it really lives in the lore, it sets a great atmosphere, the characters are really well done, it's got a great underlying plot, and even today, now almost eight years from when this this game first went out, almost nine years, well, just past eight years, uh, coming into the ninth year here almost, it's a game that even when we uh, look at these graphics, they're not top of the line, 100%. They're not going to blow away a Crisis 2 or 
Crisis three or Dead Space I show up at the three beach with the money, right? Any of these games that are coming these guys, out right come now, out of nowhere. Sleeping Junkie Dogs or whatnot, bricks, hit me with a but bat. it still holds its own. <coughs> when like you look at the stuff that's in here, it holds its own. And, um, but it also, it's the elements that surround it. The story that's there, the music, the characters, the plot lines. They're great. Those Everything about it is a fantastic thing. I can't recommend this game them. enough to people that are out there looking for something different. Especially if you're right, into right. the, uh, the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the lore that goes behind this and vampire. I mean, they really do some great stuff with that. And they really build on it. Plus, if you're a fan of Marcus Phoenix, he voices a character in here. John DiMaggio, who's uh, the voice of Bender and Marcus Phoenix. He actually voices uh, Jack, who is a vampire that kind of teaches you. You get to see a lot of him in the beginning. Um, if, if you could... Uh, something just but, started um, thinking... I, I mean, the game, you can get it, right? I, mean, I think when, uh, uh, one more thing. if you go out and you buy it, it's normally like 20 bucks, but Tell routinely, the game goes on sale for like four ninety nine on pretty much any download site. And uh, I always try to get the heads out, out, well, out there when uh, when I see it on sale, because it's, it's really a great game. Um, anyways, I'm going to walk around here, do some searching, see what we got, see if I can switch back. Nope, camera's still kind of locked up there, so we're going to be in first-person mode for a while. As you can see, even with all the fixes, it's a bit buggy still. Um, it also has a morality system in place, um, and there's the, it uses the Camarilla which is a group that is kind of think of it like law and order for the vampire society. Uh, setting this up, you are sired from a, from a vampire that did not get approval to sire a new vampire, and he's executed by the Camarilla. And they were gonna execute you in a fringe element kind of protested uh, very loudly. And so you were saved and are put on a task, and the task is to come to Santa Monica and solve uh, a dispute in the neighborhood between uh, two rival factions. And uh, one of those plot lines becomes very interesting, uh, the two sisters, and I'll say that in quotes, you'll understand it more when you get there. Um, they, uh, and there is police presence here. Um, it's it's very interesting, but anyways, the there is a morality system in place with the Camarilla. So if you commit acts of violence, for instance, if I was to come up with this cop and start beating him senseless, a bunch of cops would show up. Same with innocence or anything like that. If I feed in public, that's going to happen. Um, so you have to be very careful um, how you approach things. Very very careful with how you approach things. Asylum, the club. There, see, there's multiple paths. Like, I can go through the manholes here to get into secret places, or try to go through the front door and storm my way through. Um, it's it's it, it's just a very fleshed out, well done world. You go through four locations that have multiple, multiple places to go inside, multiple quests. It's a game that you can easily sink about 50 to 55 hours into. No sweat. What do we have here? That would be another scrumptious young player. She's one of the two of life and into my club. that we end up having to deal with. She's the more like promiscuous of the two. On freshly mowed astro uh, oh, I'm not frightening you, am I, duckling? But, um, I'm the finger down your spine and all yeah, I definitely eyes. say and that the name on all the men's if you're looking for something that I you probably tries to be interesting, and everyone um, always wants to know who I would give you a shot. Um, <laughs> I 
But there's four locations is my club. in Santa Monica, downtown Los Angeles, which actually is in uh, Hollywood, and Chinatown. And there's multiple endings to this, depending on the paths that you choose, although a lot of it is kind of detailed toward the end of the game, so you can kind of do what you want to do, and there's kind of a point in where there's three ways to work on the road, and from there you kind of pick the finale. And, uh, all the endings are great. And, uh, I can Every character, you know, most main characters out here can uh, you sure? I make a mean uh, Mary. have stories, little things, they can give you lots of uh, yeah. plot points. There's also no offense, but I got you uh, a great, <laughs> kind of a funny story. I was playing this game in 2005, maybe after it came out. I was playthroughs and um, <coughs> I ran into uh, the place where you have to go and, and this place in that place it's like a haunted house you gotta go through this well find out if this place is haunted whether or not there's a ghost in there is. Anyways, there was a point in that place where a bunch of stuff starts happening. You pots and pans start flying all over and, and uh, lights start popping and everything. And then uh, all of a sudden out of the blue, two lights in the kitchen blow out at the same time all these lights are blowing out in the kitchen. And I was kind of like, stop. I think it's time to uh, uh, take a break. You know. And yeah, that was one of the more freakier moments I've ever had in a video game. Just some chatting out there. But, you know, you have, there's, I think I want to say there's about 15 to 20 different places you can go and pick up meetings in, uh, just in the Santa Monica location. And, uh, that doesn't include all the other locations where you have about the same. So, I mean, there's about 80, 85 detailed, unique locations. There's probably about 30 to 40 unique, and yeah, maybe I'd say more than that, probably about 60 unique characters that you meet. There's a bunch of subplots that you run into, uh, meaningful subplots too. It's not just padding to, uh, thicken up the, the game time. They actually have some meat merit to them and weight to them oh, man, you. that uh, just fleshes out the uh, the entire story. So, here's a guy that's hey, I know all about vampires. You, maybe you shouldn't be running around bragging about that stuff because you're going to get killed. Um, I always love the the eye animations in this game too. But um Yeah, I mean this time we're gonna probably keep it short with um with this edition of late night game. I don't wanna take it too long. Uh this is more of an introduction. Uh the next time we go through this there'll probably be uh, more gameplay and we'll stick to more of the focus. 
This was just a way to introduce the segment and uh, take a little look at the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines when we're at it. And I'll probably do another one of these at some point where we, we do a little uh, a little more focus on this game. But, uh, definitely tweet us at GGS Gamer and let us know games that you might want to see. Right now we're doing most of this capture work on, on the PC side. So make sure if you have a request, make sure it's available on PC, and, and we'll have to obviously see if we have it in the inventory to uh, to uh, oh, capture it. But I don't think I'm supposed to. Most of us, I'm sure, we have enough uh, stuff out there that we can do this. Uh, in the meantime, I'll probably be picking some classics that are favorites of mine and uh, doing playthroughs uh, on them. Um, and we're also going to work on doing yeah, some live awesome. streaming with this. We set up a live stream, but, uh, blood, it's like the we haven't been active on it, but I think that's going to change like here now with the media and getting up. more video-oriented uh, oh with our productions here at GGS Gamer. Twist. So, with that, I think we'll go ahead and call it a night on Late Night Gamer. Why do we call it Late Night Gamer? Because right now it's uh, almost one in the morning Pacific time. Uh, <laughs> So it's definitely late night gaming, but it's a good chance for me to sit down, or any of us hey to sit down, chick, and just cool, chat about the cool games that we really enjoy you know playing, like crap, okay? and oh, you know maybe so playing man. games that we, you know, that that we maybe haven't dealt much with, but fans of the site uh, definitely want to see played. You know, maybe you want to see us have to play like Screw 18 you. hours of Storm. Uh, no matter how horrible it is, or three hours of our victory, or God forbid, uh, you want to watch an entire playthrough of Rogue Warrior. But uh, with that said, uh, we're going to call a night. This is Joe Haygood for GGS Gamer. Again, make sure you come to the website, subscribe to uh, our podcast there. Uh, if you like The Worst Stuff, you can follow them on at The Worst Stuff, or at The Worst Podcast, I'm sorry. Uh, you can also get all of our writers' Twitter feeds, myself, Vicky, uh, Tony, uh, Tanya, uh, Aza, and we've got new writers there, Ollie, and uh, uh, I want to say Robert. God, I apologize if I didn't get that right. Uh, Joe Foreman, all of us, all of our Twitters are there right on the site, so you can find them all at once and add us to your Twitter feed and we're, we're all pretty active on there uh, spouting somewhat intelligent discussion at least from my point that's somewhat intelligent sometimes just don't me taking pictures of Chick-fil-A so with that again thank you uh, for joining us for Late Night Gamer and we will hopefully get one of these out at least one a week if not more but we're going to try to I'm going to try to shoot for at least one or get multiple people in here so we can get one a week and uh, that's all. Have a good evening, folks. <laughs>